Hi, this is Paul Salt from iPhone Dev TV. Welcome to the video where I'm gonna show you how to create stretchable or resizable buttons so that you can accommodate different length strings. If you're translating apps, this is really useful. If you don't know how big your buttons are or you just wanna have buttons that are gonna look great, this is what you need to learn. And there's a, a, a good way about going about this. There's a certain way that it's not gonna work. And so I'm gonna show you how to get started. So first off, Let's just prove that these are all buttons so you can click on them. You can see that they do change. We've got some funky looking buttons because I'm demoing some graphics techniques that you can use. You can create infinitely resizable buttons. You can create buttons that have uh, sort of ornamentation in the corners and the edges. You can create buttons that have repeating content within the center. And this is gonna depend on your art. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to just delete everything here. And I've already added the, the images to my asset catalog. So I'm gonna go in here and actually remove them uh, just to get started. Now you have to be careful about this. You don't wanna delete your asset catalog. That's uh, something else I'll have to show you how to fix if you accidentally do delete it. So I'm gonna select all of these, press delete. We're gonna remove them from the project. So this is like we're starting with a clean state slate. We're gonna start it up again. We're not gonna see anything in our storyboard. So we have nothing there. Now what I wanna show you is I made these images in Sketch. So Sketch is a great utility for designing some buttons. Each of these buttons is 40 by 40 points and I'm exporting them at the 3X assets for Retina graphics. So I can use these on the iPhone 6 Plus as well as the 6. And with that, we can just import these and stretch these out. So you saw how they looked. Now it's time to learn actually how to do that and it's really easy to get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to bring in any of these buttons that we wanna use in our application. So I'm just gonna select these and drop them right in here. That's gonna add the buttons into our asset catalog right in here. You're gonna see that they're populated and now they're selected. Now we're ready to get started. So let's go back here. And what we'll need to do is just start creating some buttons using these assets. And then I'll, I'll show you a pitfall that you can have and how you can fix it using something called slicing. If you've ever done slicing for web images so that you can have custom size buttons, we're gonna do the same thing in Xcode with a new tool in the image asset catalog. It's, it's amazing. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is drag on a button. Now, drag this somewhere onto your canvas underneath the status bar. Don't drop it under the status bar, otherwise it's gonna be hard to move unless you pull out the measurements tool. All right, once we do that, we're gonna make a buy button. We want people to buy things in our app, so we might as well make a buy button. And you might wanna have a graphic here. So let's go ahead and what you need to do is set a background image for your button. So I'm gonna go in here and which one do I wanna use? Well, we'll start with the normal looking one. And it's that, that's the red one, but I didn't call it red. I called it button rounded. All right, so that looks kind of like a pill. That's not exactly what I showed you when we started. And so we have this issue and the issue becomes even more apparent when we wanna make this even even bigger. So what's going on here? Well, it turns out one of the things that we need to be aware of is how images can stretch. And right now we're not dealing with any stretchable images. So you can do this in Xcode and you can also do this in code with the UI image resizable attributes. Uh, but we're gonna do it all in Xcode without writing any code, which is really cool because you can have your designers come in here, throw in some new images, add the slicing properties that they need to. All right, so what we're gonna need to do, you can select everything here with Command A or we can just click on one of these things and start with uh, one of the buttons. It's really up to you. So I'm just gonna select this. Now, I believe you used to be able to double click and to zoom in and right now I'm double clicking and nothing is happening. So you're gonna take a look at the button down here, show slicing, that's gonna take us in. And this is actually pretty neat because it will do automatic image recognition and slice it in the way that's gonna work best. So most of the time our buttons are gonna expand horizontally unless you're doing these crazy buttons I'm gonna show you later on. And so if we just do the horizontal option, it's going to figure out how this is gonna work. Now, the way you look at this, I'll get into in a second, but first let's see what this looks like when we run the app. All right, cool. Uh, we have a little bit of clipping and it turns out that our image asset here is 40 by 40 pixels. So we need to make sure that any of the buttons that we're using in our storyboard file are going to conform to that. And then we're gonna look at the sizing options here. These buttons default to a height of 30 points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both buttons and we're gonna change the height to 40 
And there we go. We have a nice resizable button. We can customize the font color. We can make this look really great. If we select them both, let's go ahead and choose a different text color. Let's go with white so that you can see it. So there's our buy button. We can run the app now. We'll see the same type of thing in the app, except the one's gonna go off the screen. So great way to test out resizable buttons in your applications. All right, so up next, let's do another resizable button, but let's use a different image asset. Let's use the non-rounded, and let's do a button square. So this one's a little bit boring. I think button square two, I have a little outline. It looks a little bit interesting. So what's this gonna look like when we try and stretch it? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna duplicate it holding the Alter Option key. I'm gonna drag this out. And all of a sudden we're gonna see, if I can zoom in here, we're gonna see some artifacting. So that, that one pixel border on the end is now being stretched, which is not something we want. And if I go and run this on the iPhone, you're going to see that, again, we have that artifact and we don't want that. We want something like this, but even this, you can see it's it's a little bit wider here than it is on the bottom. So it's being stretched. So here's where the asset catalogs allows us to resize something. We can use our, our button square two. That's the one that we wanna start slicing. So I'll start slicing it. Again, hit the button in the bottom to switch between the overview and the slicing. And here we're only gonna go horizontal. So again, this is gonna choose the, the best layout. So now we see two different examples of how this is going to work. And they both look different when we slice them. So let's pull them both open. I can do that. You can see the difference here. So what we're gonna see here is this is the image data that we can actually slice out of the image. We can ignore this. And it's gonna be this one vertical line right here. If I zoom in, we should see that there's a single pixel here. And that's going to get repeated. Now, depending on how you slice an image, you can, can mess up things. So we could repeat this chunk of, of image data, we could repeat all of that as, and it would still look good. So this one, because we, we don't have any variation in the horizontal direction with these, we're not gonna have any issues repeating this whole chunk of code. So if we run this, you're gonna see it looks great. Now where you can shoot yourself in the foot is if we zoom in here and you accidentally drag this line this way, now you can see that all the pixel data here isn't going to match. So we're gonna come up and it's actually gonna clip right here. And then we're gonna jump to our repeatable data. And so we're gonna see a bunch of like little cliffs and mountains uh, or hills, whatever you wanna call them, when we see the repeating of the button. So you can see that we've got these ridges. So it's kind of like a, a handle on a sword or something. That's not what you want with your buttons. So you need to be careful about this. All you have to do to fix this is drag this line over somewhere towards the middle. It doesn't really matter too much. Just make sure that the repeatable stuff is gonna be good in the vertical and the horizontal direct, sorry, in the vertical directions. And then if we rerun it, we should get rid of that artifacting and we have a nice clean edge again. Now. Xcode can automatically set this up for you so you don't have to customize it. That's what it did down here. We don't have any variation because there's no rounded, see we have rounded corners here. We don't have rounded corners for a square button. All right, so that's how you can get started with some custom buttons. In the next video, we're gonna take a dive deeper where I'll show you how to play around with some even more advanced effects and at more advanced slicing to really create some interesting techniques that you can use in your applications and sort of something that you could give an artist if you wanted them to do some kind of repeatable pattern.